Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is another B1M reaction and yeah, I'm now sort of getting back into the channel. I used to watch this years ago, like back in the day. A few, I didn't used to watch lots, but I used to watch sort of the, the big videos back in the day. I can't really remember which ones, but I just know I used to love this channel and like the stadium reactions or stadium videos and stuff like that. But this title was taking me off guard and I don't know if people are going to watch this. This is just sort of one that I saw and I was like, this doesn't even make sense. Like, I just thought, what the fuck? But I don't know if people are going to enjoy this reaction. If you do and you want to see more of this kind of stuff, let me know. But again, this may not go down well at all and people may not enjoy this. But the title is Why This 3D House, This 3D Printed, 3D Printed House Will Change the World. And I'm here thinking, a 3D printed house? Like, I, knew, I know 3D printers are like a thing that have sort of come up recently and they're sort of like, building things and like the more we sort of research them the more they sort of do things just the crazier technology we'll get but a 3d house does this mean like i'm sort of here thinking they've just got one big ass printer that just prints a house but that that that's sure that's not going to be the case i know that's not going to be the case but what like what i don't get it it's such a weird sort of thought but we're going to see in this video how this actually happened because again I'm guessing it's sort of, sort of printed parts of the house and put it together kind of thing because there is no way there's a just a big ass printer that just prints all these things and if there is how have I never heard about it but I'm sure there isn't but nevertheless I do want to get into this and see what this video is about but yeah if you want to see more of the channel let me know also quick shout out to my Instagram and my Twitter links to those links in the description for those interested in following me on those second channel as well links there for those who want to subscribe to my sort of more sporty type content but also just other types of videos as well but let's get into this one and let's see what this one's about. I really do like this channel though, man. The idea of 3D printing our buildings is nothing new. Faced with a desperate need to construct more homes faster and in a more efficient way, countless innovators have found themselves drawn by the idea of being able to quickly print a structure and have spent years trying to scale the technology. But for all their efforts, that 3D printed world has proven elusive and many impressive prototypes oh, have struggled shit. to become viable for mass production. But things have just taken a massive step forward in Germany with the completion of the first ever 3D print. Bro, it looks nice as well. I wonder what materials they use for it. Like, is it like, like what material could they use for it? Like, would it be, would it be metal and like wood there? But like, at home nice. to become fully certified under a national government's building regulations. The impact of this moment for construction and for the buildings we all use could be huge. With the promise of cutting waste, reducing time on site and addressing labour shortages, some see 3D printing as the answer to many of our world's challenges. Originally used for small-scale prototypes, advances in 3D printing have led to the creation of full-scale structures like bridges and homes, and even plans for mankind's first Martian base. But while 3D printed structures have appeared around the world, from Canada and the Netherlands to Dubai, which wants to 3D print a quarter of its new buildings by 2030, the technology is yet to take off as a widespread building technique. But the completion of this 3D printed house in Beckham, Germany is set to change everything. Developed by leading formwork and scaffolding firm Perry, experts in its disruptive products and technologies department and its project partners, the structure, a detached single-family property, is the first 3D printed house in Germany and offers 160 square metres of living space across its two storeys. Critically, the structure is the first 3D printed building in Germany to become certified with a national building accreditation, smashing a major barrier and paving the way for larger, more complex projects. Located just outside the city of Ulm, Perry's team is now working on the largest 3D printed multifamily house in Europe with 380 square meters of living space. See, that looks like just a typical fucking house. Don't know why I swore there, <laughs> but it just looks like a typical house. and. Typical house at that. It looks like a like a millionaire's kind of house, man. And this is all from three D printing. What? And obviously this hasn't been built yet, but that's just the idea. But that is just. But I can't get my head around how f mental technology is, man. I don't know how quick it will take. I'm hoping it sort of touches upon how quick it takes to sort of build three D houses, but. 
I mean, this is wild. It's divided into five apartments across oh, apartments. three levels. Oh. Oh, okay, makes sense. It so how clear. did Perry get into the world of 3D printing? Here at Perry, we have let's let's call it a think tank. Uh, it's a department called Disruptive Products and Technologies, and they think about projects or products and technologies that might uh, substitute our current core products, that might endanger our business model. In this department, so various ideas are always thrown around and actually actively pursued. So it's not just a monitoring uh, department. And one of the topics, uh, even years ago, was uh, 3D construction printing. When we um, build up the printer on a construction site, directly on the site, and we start printing there, that was um, a moment for me which I, where I realized that we are... Dog started barking again, so I had to sort that out, but we're back and I... Th I think I went back in like two seconds. I can't exactly remember where we were, but I think it was around. It was um, a moment for me which I, where I realized that we are printing that on site and um, people will live in there. So that was for me um, a moment where I really said, wow, that's not just um, theory and that's not just um, in a lab. It's, it, could, it could happen in, in real. The homes were both built with Cobod's modular BOD2 printing system. A flexible platform that can be scaled to suit projects of varying size. The printer needs just two operators and takes less than 48 hours to set up on site. Once up and running, the system can print as fast as a meter per second using data from integrated design models. There's obviously there's been a lot of firms around the world that have done this, a lot of research teams of 3D printed buildings over the years, and there's been kind of you know different levels of excitement around it. Why isn't it widespread? Why isn't this just the way that we build all of our buildings? 3D printing really affects the overall construction process. It has impact on the planning side, execution of the walls, but also on other trades and, and the planning and permitting. All, all of these things come into play here. The buildings that we've seen across the globe actually have seen a steady increase in, let's say, validity. Um, so the first. Wait, was that the time? The time it take, takes to do it? So seven steady hours. increase in, let's say, validity. So, does um, this so the first ones have been basically kind of big 3D printed flower pots, where all the other trades have been thrown in there, but nobody's really thought about how to integrate it into a full construction process. Maybe sometimes in the, in the news and media that hasn't been, it's always been portrayed like everything was perfect, but uh, obviously this has been a steady learning curve. And now we feel that we've hit another milestone where we've now been able to execute these permitted buildings. What Perry have done in Germany with this building, how is that different to what we've seen before in Dubai, the Netherlands, you know, many kinds of other places? We wanted to do real world, architectural scale, permitted residential buildings. Um, so we've done lots and lots of tests um, to, to get this German building permit and we have one of the toughest building codes around, so that's, that's quite a milestone to get these completely normally permitted residential homes and that's I think where the, where the core difference lies. I have included project partners from the start. We are working directly with a construction company, we are working directly with architects which don't want just to make a demo project. It's a real project um, where um, later people will live in. It's a, a project where um, the investors get um, rents out every month so it's something which um, will be used and the other thing is, um, I guess, the, the, the speed and the size. Now it's the, the actually the biggest 3D printed um, building in Europe. Oh, Perry also engaged. It's so weird how it's just in like a normal sort of town, like a normal estate, and you're going to have this one like crazy looking building <laughs> just in comparison to the others. Maybe it will sound like a sore thumb, but... I feel like it's going to look pretty cool and you've sort of seen the other ones that have been built or are projected to be built and it looks it does look pretty it's cool. a number of the core trades on these projects a critical hurdle that few other 3d printed buildings have attempted to cross with services and other works already coordinated with the structural design errors on site have been almost completely eradicated saving mm. time money and waste material but at the same time, it's quite sad because, I mean, some people will probably lose work from this when this properly comes in like 10, 20 years time. But I guess people have to sort of work to function these things. I just, I hope this isn't one of those things that just stops people from being able to do this kind of work because 
I mean, my brother's a construction worker himself and I know he probably relies on this kind of stuff to sort of all for money and all that sort of stuff but maybe it won't be able to move that quick but it's kind of like how sort of factories at one point were ran by just people and then slowly um, machines and like yeah machines came into place and a lot less people were needed at them sort of work industrial revolution that, that's not the industrial revolution is it is that the industrial revolution <laughs> I swear it w wasn't that ages ago though. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> oh my head, I'm so stupid. <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say, I hope. While the savings may be <laughs> modest here, they'd soon add up across an entire estate or housing development. Looking spacious though. Of... Real world savings have you seen on, on this project so far? There's really this integration of of other trades has a huge impact. Um, so we've had the electrician come into one of these buildings and he walks around and says, well, guys, you know, I'll, I'll be saving up to like 12 days in here. Um, so we, we are saving a lot of labor in other trades because there's in the, in the buildings we're executing, there's not gonna be a single slot that has to be cut. Nobody's gonna have to drill a hole for a power outlet. Though the design of these buildings may feel relatively straightforward when compared to some of today's architecture, the team are using the lessons learned to construct larger structures in a variety of forms. With German building certifications now under their belt, the team are planning more projects using different materials and with a focus on further reducing waste. Oh, but while there is cause for optimism, we're still some way from the widespread uptake of 3D printing and several challenges remain not least breaking into a traditionally conservative industry. I mean, securing German building certification is a, is a huge step for you guys and a huge step for the world of 3D printing. What kind of other challenges and barriers are there on the way between where we are now and this being the way we build our homes, buildings, offices? Well, it's a lot about educating people, really, um, to know, you know, it's, it's a different type of, of planning a building. Um, it's different for the contractor, it's different for the electrician, it's, it's different all around for everybody involved. So all these trades now have to learn a, how to cope with this technology and how to make the best of it, not be threatened by it, but to to see the potential it can have for these individual trades and make their life easier and make construction more safe and more efficient. Um, there's definitely a spot for all the other conventional construction techniques who are also evolving. So uh, 3D printing will play a very important role. We are convinced of that. Um, but this educational diffusion process into the market will still take some time. Would you live in a 3D printed house? Oh. But I would love to. Oh. Of course. <laughs> right away, I'd, I'd be all over the design of that. Um, I mean, just having round shapes, which are yeah. also way more sustainable than the weird rectangles we, that we build right now. I feel like it probably looks more satisfying on the eye, like, in my room now, it's just all sort of corners, corners. But if it's like sort of round, rounded, I think that'd be yeah, nice. Um, definitely, and, you know, we, we've tested all of it, so we know that it's very, very stable. While the technology has had its challenges, the success of Perry's project in Germany marks a major step forward and will stand as a powerful case study for innovators, rekindling the determination to make this building technique viable at scale. That 3D printed world we've imagined has just moved one huge step closer to becoming real. This video was made possible by Perry. Learn more hey, he's got well. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, Shout out B1M and getting his money in. You know and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction. Subscribe to the B1M. Mate, I love the channel so much. Again, there's so many more videos. I don't know how this is going to go down because it's kind of a, a weird sort of topic. And I don't know if the people who watch my channel will be interested in this kind of stuff. But I love this channel and I would want to do more reactions if people want to see them. Man. The world of construction has taken its first step into rapid production with little or no delays. I was hoping to see the actual house, not zooming in. That is true, but I'm struggling to see how the process could be quicker and more efficient than free fabrication like the ball house, for example, especially as it seems like the floors, insulation, internal things can't be printed anyway. This seems like a long winded way of just making walls. Not enough details here. We want to see how did the floor, roof, utilities, etc. and how it was finished. Fair, it's probably hard to do that, but I guess that's how it would have been cool to see more details. 3D printers, printing 3D printers, now that's when machines take over the world. That's a crazy thought, man.
Can you do a follow up video when it's all finished showing full time taking costs etc extremely interesting. I'd love to see that honestly. Unreinforced concrete, I guess they don't have earthquakes in Germany. Yeah, that's true. Like in Europe, this is probably more sort of reliable because there isn't like earthquakes and things like that. But still, it's still intriguing to see this kind of stuff, man. I want to see the utilities installed, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, broadband, and interior design put into place. There's no steel in the house. No, not earthquake proof. <laughs> Nice. This stuff wouldn't go in like the US or like certain Asian countries because I know them like Japan and stuff like where earthquakes are just consistent and just crazy. I mean, I guess it has to be in a certain location where this sort of stuff isn't at risk. But it is still an advancement and it's still interesting to see. But again, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you think this is actually a big step forward or do you just sort of think it's just it's just meh? It's not actually that big of a sort of step forward, as I said. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. What more? If you want more B1M, suggest in the comments, and I'll be sure to do so in the future. But until next time, like, subscribe, peace.